A year ago today, I made one of the biggest mistakes in rendering and I basically got to a point where I rendered the wall and I had to start completely again because I messed it up. And the reason why is because I made some of the biggest mistakes you can make in rendering. And in today's video, I want to show you the big mistakes I had so you can avoid them so when it comes to you rendering or starting a new project, you won't go through the same trials I had because trust me, it was horrible. <laughs> Pay for the materials again, and now I've got to do it again. So I've lost a day, I've lost money, materials, and um, I've lost sanity. <laughs> Long story short, I rendered a wall. It wasn't a particularly big wall, middle of summer, and what happened was I had to basically strip it all back and start again. It was that bad I couldn't even get a finish on it. Now looking back, it was very amateur. I actually got a comment that said something like. <laughs> I think it was basically wrong from start to finish, complete amateur. Do you know what? Totally agree. <laughs> it wasn't very good. So today's video isn't about me necessarily failing. It's about showing you where I went wrong, basically paving the way and how you can get better results without going through the same trials I had. Because trust me, you don't want to do it. Now let's go through the list and let's work our way through. The first one being is the mix. The mix in rendering is probably the first part of call that you need to get right. If your mix is wrong, then everything else after will just completely fail. So the biggest, biggest mistake you don't want to do is you don't want to make sure that your top coat is stronger than your scratch coat. Now by that I mean the base coat has more sand cement content than the top coat. And the reason with that is if you get that the wrong way around, then your render will basically crack because the base coat will just force its way through the top and crack it entirely. Now I have done this before. It wasn't me mixing, someone else did it, but yeah. I have done it and it does work. If you get your mixes wrong, it goes out the window. So there should be a link here. That is a separate video, maybe watch it at the end, where I will show you how to get the complete perfect mix in rendering. But the first thing, always make sure your scratch coat and top coat are mixed in a correct manner. First coat, for example, scratch coat four to one, four sand, one cement. Top coat, five to one, five sand, one cement. Scratch is stronger than the top. That's number one. Tip number two is application. When you're applying the render, don't treat it like it's plaster. When you're putting it on the wall, leave it. The worst thing you can do, is, when I first started using sand cement in New Zealand, I was treating it as if it was plaster. Trying to get it smooth straight away, trying to get it flat with my trowel, that is the worst thing to do. Basically, when you're applying the render, what happens is the steel will pull the moisture from the back of the render and basically what that means is it will lose grip to the brick or to the block that you're working on. And the more you play with the render, the more you trowel it with the trowel, the more you use steel contact on top of that render, it's just gonna keep pulling the moisture from the back and eventually it will just fall off. If it doesn't fall off, what will happen is you'll get a really weak bond. And when you tap it the day after, when you tap around, you'll hear that it sounds hollow. And that's basically because the moisture was pulled away from the back and it's lost contact to the brick block work. And we're gonna talk about this later in the video and this is probably the most important point, but basically you need moisture when you're working in render. It needs moisture, it needs to have a key. We'll go into that later on. Like I said, that's the most important point. Don't play with the render, apply it. And then leading on to the next bit, I always like to rule both coats. So when you're applying a scratch coat, for example, a lot of people will just apply the scratch coat, whack it on and then you know, scratch it with uh, the scarifier. I like to rule it flat. And what this means is when you come to applying your top coat, you've got an even thickness to work with. And that means it's gonna dry at the same time, it's gonna dry at a nice point, and it's gonna get overall an, an even texture, even complexion, it's just gonna make the process so much smoother. So I like to rule both coats, scratch coat as well as the top coat, that is a big, tip that I have because I've made a mistake in the past of just trialing a scratch coat and it can be wavy, it can be all over the place. When you come to applying a top coat and it's not flat, you'll have sections that can have 10, 12 mil, sections that got 5 mil. It just dries at different points and it's a real pain to work with. So bear that in mind, ruling and getting your wall and both coats flat is essential from the get-go. Next point, thicknesses. Don't apply too much render in one hit. Basically, if you're using a typical sand cement render and, and if you apply too much in one section, and again, if you keep playing it as well, if you keep playing with it, ruling it, and you've applied a big section at one time, it's gonna be too much weight. You know, what's gonna happen, it will just come off. I've had it where I've rendered a whole wall 
too thick and I've played with it, I've ruled it too much and eventually all the moisture's come from the back and the weight of the render is just tumbled down. Whole lot falls on the floor, I'm not even joking. <laughs> The whole lot of render that I've applied all over the floor. Now, one, it's highly embarrassing. <laughs> two, very inconvenient. And three, it's a pain to deal with. So just deal with the two coat structure, working with an overall thickness of 15 millimeters. That's what I like my overall thickness of render to be at 15 mil. So if you're working to beads, get a 15 millimeter corner beads. And that is the ideal thickness for me. About seven mil scratch, seven, eight mil top coat good to go. So that's that. Don't apply too much thickness in one go. Trust me, it will end up on the floor. <laughs> so two coats is key here. Um, next thing, don't one coat render. I'm not going to go too deep into it. Don't do it. It's not good practice. Bad form. Looks awful. <laughs> don't do that. Next one, preparation. This is a kind of new thing for me. I've started using pre-grit on, um, say I'm working on brickwork. And even sometimes on blocks, I'm starting to use pre-grit a bit more. And that's because I'm finding that at some points, if it's the uh, the bricks are dry, if they haven't got much key to them, I'm just finding a pre-grit, I'm getting a nicer grip when I'm applying the render. It's just a bit nicer to work with. And you know that you've got a definitive strong hold there. What it all comes down to render, you need to make sure that your scratch coat has got a nice addition to the bricks, the blocks, and also the same, your top coat has got a nice key to the background it's going on to. It needs to have that. If it doesn't, then everything else after that is gonna be failed. Basically, if you haven't got a weak bond to the brick or the block that you're working on to, you have basically failed in rendering because it's gonna create a weak backing and a weak product. And when you tap it, it will sound hollow and that's because it hasn't got the grip it needs to the brick or block work you're working on. So like I've been saying I've been using a pre-grip this one is, in particular is brilliant. I'll leave it in the description below. I'm not endorsed by him. It's cheaper than Render Grip and it's it dries fast and it's very nice to apply. You just roll it on. It's a lovely product and I'm really enjoying using it. So at the moment I'm using Pre-Grip on most backgrounds because you know you're covered, you know you're safe and you don't have to worry about the render having a bad grip. Now this is the most important thing and the main reason I failed when I did that rendering job a year ago was because I didn't have enough moisture to the background I was working on. Let me explain. I basically went in, hot summer day, the sun was directly on the wall. And you want to avoid that if you can as well. Avoid direct contact with the sun. Because what happens is it just dries the render out. And what it does, the render will go on to the background and it'll just sap the moisture out of it. And it'll basically shrink right back. And this one is, creates cracking, or two creates a weak bond. But what you need to do before you do any rendering is especially on the top coat holds your background down if you use pre-grit you don't need to but holds the background down and what this does is allows moisture to sit on the surface of the background you're working onto basically render needs to have hydration it needs to have a bit of moisture to grip to so then it can bind to the moisture and get a nice strong bond and the big problem i did is i was working on a scratch coat with my top coat and i basically did it dry i was just using a little water brush you need to hose the scratch coat down I'm not just talking a little bit, you need to make sure that the area is saturated. So what I recommend is hose the area down. I only learned this, by the way, from my big mistakes by messing up, but hose the scratch coat down, give it a nice big area of water. If it's drying up, hose it down again. If you see areas where the, dry, the dryness is appearing, the render starting to come through, whack a load of water on again. Seriously, you need to hose it down, you need to hydrate the section you're working on. And then get your mix on. Let that dry up a little bit, but as long as you can still see the moisture in the render, you don't want it soaking wet where you can see the water running down. You just want it to be wet in the sense that there's moisture in the render. And then after you've mixed, apply your render to that scratch coat that has had a nice layer of hydration to it. That is the biggest thing and the biggest mistake I made in the past was, was that I didn't make sure the render was livened up in the sense that it was sprayed down. Get your hose, spray the scratch coat down and then apply your top coat. And then it's got a nice strong bond to work to. It's not gonna go wrong. It's not gonna dry out the render when you're working with it. You're gonna have lots of time to do it. And even if the sun is on you, as if you have enough hydration, the render you're finishing with the top coat, you're gonna have enough time to float it and sponge it without worrying about it setting it like fire. That's what happened a year ago when I went wrong. It went off like that. 
the wind was on it, sun was on it, and there was no hydration in background I was working on. Basically, the render just dried out completely, and I was left with this solid, horrible mess that I couldn't finish and couldn't get right. So they're the main tips and the main mistakes I made in rendering, and the main ones you want to avoid. Now, if you want to see the correct way to render a wall where I didn't fail, and I'll show you the full process on how to get it right, click this video here, and use that in conjunction with these mistakes, and I can guarantee you'll do well. Click it now, watch that video, cheers. Uh -oh.